If you're thinking about getting an FHA mortgage in 2023, then you're in the right place. Hi, my name is Scott Hastings, and this is a video uh, about the FHA mortgage program, specifically um, for 2023. Um, if you find this video helpful, it would be super uh, awesome if you would click the like and subscribe button that really helps me out and if you have any questions uh, please put them in the comment section below and i will answer them uh, asap so the first question is what is an fha mortgage so an fha mortgage is a government backed program that's really made for homeowners that might you know have a little bit of a challenge with their credit score or need a little bit more room um, for their debt to income ratio. Maybe they don't make quite enough, mo uh, enough money or they just need to have the lowest down payment they can possibly get. Um, and it's a great program. Uh, so for 2023, each year, uh, the loan limit for an FHA mortgage and a conventional mortgage is released usually in December. So a few weeks back that came out and it went up uh, quite a bit. So it's different for different counties throughout the entire country. Um, in general, uh, you're gonna have the lowest loan limit. I'm filming this from North Carolina, around the Charlotte area. Um, and here, that's now $472,030. Now, if you're in an area of the country where home prices are quite a bit higher, let's just say San Francisco, uh, for example, then that FHA loan limit is going to be one million eighty nine thousand and thirty dollars. Um, but either way, the basics of the program are the same. So what are those? One, uh, the minimum down payment is three and a half percent of the loan amount. A lot of people don't maybe I find don't really know what that means. Very simple. You could take out a calculator and take the purchase price of the house that you see online say it's a hundred thousand dollars for easy math you multiply that times 3.5 hit the percent button and that's it so on a hundred thousand um, dollar home the down payment would be three and a half percent same calculation if it's a million dollar home and you're in san francisco um so <clears throat> The next question I usually have about FHA loans is um, what are the credit score requirements? So it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to hear different things if you start searching online and you know talk to different people. But in general, um, you're really going to need a 640 credit score. The reason that is, is with a 640 credit score, you are going to basically have the same um, uh, approval requirements as whether you had a 800 credit score. Um, you're going to be able to have the uh, highest debt to income ratio, best rates, best chance of getting qualified, etc. cetera. Um, if you have under a 640 credit score, it's going to be much harder. I found with a, say even a 620 uh, credit score, to a 640 credit score, that means you're probably going to have a lower debt to income ratio requirement. You probably have to have more money in your bank account after you close, et cetera. And the answer really on an FHA loan is technically the FHA loan uh, program will go down to a 500 credit score, but it is almost very difficult to find a lender that would even do that. And the requirements are much higher. Um, I've probably only done a handful of those in my career, and this is where you're going to have at least 10% down, probably more. Um, you're going to have to have a very limited debt to income ratio requirement. So I'll back up, um, before I get over your head, <laughs> what is a debt to income ratio requirement? So debt to income ratio is very simply your total debts divided by your monthly income before taxes. That's important. So it's before they take taxes out. Um, the next question is, well, what are your monthly debts? 
So if you look on your credit report, um, whether you, you know, look on Credit Karma or wherever, or if I run your credit, um, I could tell you, it's going to be what is the minimum payment due? So when you go to your credit card statement, maybe you have, I don't know, a thousand dollar balance, but the minimum payment's $25. That's what we as a lender will take is the minimum payment, $25. Um, you know, anything else in your credit report, car loans, um, student loans, anything, whatever the payments are, the minimum that the uh, you know, creditor will allow monthly as the payment, that's going to be um, what we use. Uh, and um, so... <clears throat> uh, when you're talking about a mortgage payment, um, what does that consist of? Well, an FHA mortgage payment is gonna consist of the principal and interest. That is your loan amount and whatever your interest rate is, principal and interest. It's also gonna be your monthly um, real estate taxes. So you would take the annual real estate tax bill, divide it by 12, Add that to your monthly payment, the, the 12th of it. It's going to be a 12th of your homeowner's insurance payment. So whether that's State Farm or Allstate or whoever, um, you know, whatever the, the annual bill is, it's going to be a 12th of that. And then it's also going to be your mortgage insurance premium. So that's our next piece on FHA loans. An FHA loan requires mortgage insurance no matter how much money you put down on a loan. So this is very commonly misunderstood by people I talk to. They think if they put 20% down on FHA loan, they won't have mortgage insurance. You will have mortgage insurance. Um, and you'll, well, I won't, that's for another video to get into the details of that. But let's just suffice it to say, you definitely have mortgage insurance, no matter what, on FHA loan. Um, the way they calculate mortgage insurance is, well, it's 0.85% of the loan amount um, divided by 12 per month. So put your question in the comments or go to my website, which is also listed in the comments if you have any questions about any of this, because it can get a really wonky and way too detailed for what we're doing here. Um, the next really other thing to, to comment on though on an FHA loan is the difference between an FHA loan and a conventional loan, for example, is an FHA loan has, in addition to the monthly mortgage insurance, it has what they call an upfront mortgage insurance premium. So conveniently, they're not going to make you pay that at closing, but you are being charged. So that's gonna be 1.75% of the loan amount. They're gonna add it to your loan and that's gonna be a one-time upfront mortgage insurance premium. So if you borrow $100,000, you're really borrowing $101,750. So something to remember. Um, I'll get a lot of questions on student loans. So if you have student loans, even if they're in deferment, even if there is you know, no payment that they're requiring you to make right now, we as lenders have to take a half of a percent of whatever your total loan uh, student loan balances are and use that as a minimum payment so if you have you know a thousand dollars well that's very low <laughs> let's say you have ten thousand um, <clears> dollars <throat> in uh, uh, student loans then we have to use a half a percent of that um, and use that as a monthly mortgage payment uh, student loan payment um, also, uh, sometimes people are curious about, well, what if you have collections on your credit report? Well, medical collections are okay. We don't count medical collections. FHA doesn't count medical collections. Don't worry about it. They will affect your credit score, but they don't have to be paid. Other collections, anything under $2,000 does not have to be paid. Basically, don't worry about it. Anything over $2,000 or if you have a, a cumulative over $2,000 in collections on your credit report, they either have to be paid at closing or we, the lender and FHA, will accept 5% of the balance as a minimum payment. Um, again, this is going into your debt to income ratio. And then charge-offs. Let's say I see this fairly often. 
um, basically the lender just gave up. They quit trying to collect payments from you and they, they basically charged it off of their books and on the credit report, it'll say charge off. Um, that's as if it doesn't exist. That's ain't, you know, don't worry about it again. Um, other things that you need to be aware of for an FHA loan when you're going to qualify, um, or really any loan for that matter, are things like um, alimony, child support, um, whatever. If you're divorced and you have monthly alimony that you have to pay and child support that you have to pay, then we have to um, look at that divorce decree and whatever those monthly payments are that you make for those things, that's going to be counted in your debt income ratio as well. Um, also, uh, another thing to remember about FHA loans is you can get an FHA loan on anything uh, up to a four unit property. So you could buy a one unit or a single family residence. You could buy a duplex or a quadruplex. And on any, any one of those, you still only have to put that three and a half percent down. So that's a huge advantage, um, especially in markets where they, uh, you know, duplexes and quadruplexes are prevalent. Um, you know, again, that's a subject for another video or, um, you know, I can uh, answer any questions you have in the comments about that. But uh, on on those multi-unit properties, you can use uh, projected rent or actual rent um, from the other units to qualify for your mortgage. So the ultimate house hack. <laughs> um, so maybe a few last minute things that are must, uh, must knows, I should guess, I should say, or things you really should think about. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you look online and there's property listings on Zillow and Redfin, and wherever, realtor.com, it'll have a um, estimated monthly mortgage payment. That's pretty much always wrong. So just ignore that. What you must do is get pre-approved for a mortgage. So I am a mortgage uh, lender. I currently lend in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. Um, even if you're not uh planning on buying a home until later in 2023 for example now is the time to um ha do a uh, an application um let me or whoever your lender is in your area um run your credit report you know make sure there's no problems you don't know uh, uh know about even you know a lot of times i'll run people's credit report and i'll tell them their credit score they're shocked you know they didn't even know that was on there um so Get pre-approved now. Uh, also, especially if you're self-employed, I say this all the time, you must get pre-approved because uh, many times self-employed people will write off way too much income to qualify um, for what they want to buy. So we need to figure that out now, uh, not later. Um, so anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please click the like and subscribe button. That really helps me out a lot. Um, okay, have a great day.